because I don't want it to work. Greetings, folks. It is Sunday, November 8th. The time is 4.08 p.m. and the temperature is around 18 degrees Celsius. That was Bloor Street West I started out on and I'm currently traveling north on Jane Street. And the plan for this one is to head up to Annette Street and I'll turn right and head east along the southern edge of the Junction neighborhood. And then I'll continue on east and find my way down to Harvard Street. And I'll ride east along the length of Harvard Street. I don't really have a plan for what to do in between where Annette Street ends and where Harvard Street begins, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. This is a rather nice day and it's been a while since I've recorded a bike ride. I think about a, about a week at least, so I thought it was a good chance to jump on the bike. And I've been meaning to do a video down Annette Street for some time on this channel. So I guess there's no time like the present. I don't know how long this ride will be or how many kilometers it will cover. If I were to continue on north up Jane Street, I could turn right at Dundas and go through the heart of the Junction neighborhood. Or I could continue on straight up to St. Clair Avenue West and turn right and that'll take me through the stockyards. But I have covered both of those areas a number of times in this channel. So this is where Annette Street begins, which I think is one of the nicer streets on this end of the city. Conveniently, it does have bike lanes. And it's got kind of a similar vibe to it as Harvard Street does. I think we're at the tail end of the peak fall colors. I'd imagine in a week or so, most of these trees will be quite bare. All it takes is a good rainfall or two to clear them off at this point. So coming up, is this Runnymede? Yes, it is. So I think this is where the junction formerly begins, at least on the north side.
just to the south of here along Bloor Street West is the Line 2 subway. It's probably a good 10 minute walk or so down to Bloor. Maybe a bit less than that. So this area is relatively well served by transit. And that is St. Cecilia Catholic School on the right. I guess most of the homes on the street date back to somewhere around the 1920s. Now to the south, which is on my right, is the High Park neighborhood. In fact, right here, if you turn right, you can find High Park Station. This is Quebec Avenue. So just up ahead should be Keel Street, or at least in a few blocks. And if you were to turn north, Keel and Dundas would be the main intersection of the Junction neighborhood. That's High Park Avenue. And is that a dead raccoon? It was. That's unfortunate. And this is Keel Street. I should be able to make the light. There's a subway station to the right. And up ahead here at Dundas Street West. It's called Dundas Street West, even though it heads north to south through this particular section and that street will end and on the other side it'll turn into DuPont Street. I have done a cycling video down DuPont earlier this year and that was during the pandemic. So perhaps I'll stay on DuPont but I won't stay on there for too long. Harvard Street starts at Ossington, so at some point I'll head east and then turn south onto Ossington. This is the intersection of Annette and Dundas Street, with that being the start of DuPont just ahead, and the railway tracks. I think this particular area is known as the Junction Triangle. The 
and that's the West Toronto Rail Path just up above. I have recorded a ride down there as well. That was actually the same ride I recorded the DuPont video. It's always unfortunate when people decide to block the bike lane. There were a number of cyclists just behind me getting bunched up, perhaps. One of them will pass me soon. So this is DuPont I'm heading east on. This street is Symington, maybe at Lansdowne I'll turn south and take that to Bloor. Then I could take Bloor over to Ossington. I think I just figured out a route. And who really knows how many more days like this we'll have this year. I'm hoping to do at least one more ride along the waterfront before it gets too cold. And some more rides out on the east end. So there will still be plenty of cycling videos coming up. All right, and this is lands down here. So just as this bike lane ends, I'll turn right. So I'm now traveling south. I'll be at Bloor Street pretty soon. And when I get to Bloor, I'll turn left. This is Lappin Avenue. This guy in inline skates is moving pretty well. Back when I was in high school, I used to inline skate quite a bit. But any surface that wasn't too smooth kind of turned into a vibration fest on your feet. And he's got the right idea, just take the whole lane here. This is Wallace Avenue. So this whole area is to the northwest of downtown Toronto. And this should be Lansdowne Station. Just here on the left and Bloor Street, straight ahead. There should be a dedicated bike lane on this stretch of Bloor Street. Some noise. 
noisy brakes on that guy's skates. He's going for it through the red. Oh, he's turning left. That's one way to do it. I'm sure I'd get scolded in the comments if I made that move. Of course, that's not why I didn't <laughs> make it a legal left. Kind of nice cycling in this weather. The last few rides I had were a bit on the cooler side. I was battling some rain and that never ending runny nose you tend to encounter on colder rides. Let's see if I can make this advance. Yeah, we're good, barely. see the bike lane, but these are so narrow, you can't pass. It looks like there's a family going out for a nice ride, so I'll just stay completely out of their hair. Also, traffic's moving at a pace that's not exactly a challenge to keep up. Okay, here I'll slide over into the bike lane. Gotta be careful with these right turning vehicles. He was there first, that was his turn. A lot of cyclists will just assume they have the right of way and dangerously pass those drivers to the right. And this up here is Dufferin Street. So Dufferin Station will be just on the left and Dufferin Mall will be to the right. Well, south for a few blocks. Again, more right turning cars. I think that guy was off in La La Land. It's no big deal, we can coast for a bit. Ossington's just up here. This is the Bloor Court Village neighborhood. Thank you. That little guy will be a speed demon in no time. And this is Dover Court.
for having a <laughs> disagreement. So this is Ossington Avenue where there seems to be a traffic jam of cyclists trying to squeeze right around this car. Not the smartest thing to do in the world, folks. I think I did a walk down Harvard about a month and a half or so ago. I always tend to lose track of when I cover different parts of the city. But Harvard should be just up ahead here. There's a number of cars in the left lane. I think that cyclist might have been waiting for me, but he had a car behind him. And this is Harvard. This is certainly a more pleasant street to take then Blur Street, if you're going east-west along this part of the city. It's a nicer ride, there's less traffic, there's less cyclists to deal with. And if you do encounter a slower cyclist, there's plenty of opportunity to safely pass them where Blur Street kind of pinches you in on those very narrow protected bike lanes. Just up ahead is where the Garrison Creek used to run through the city, but it's been buried. I figured out on the walk I did through here, on the left there is the remnant of the bridge that was filled in that used to go over the Garrison Creek. On the right is Art. Eggleton Park. And on the left, I think it's Bickford Park. The sign was obscured. I tried to snatch a peek of it. Sometimes I do that. I get a glimpse of a name of something and then I pass it off as if I knew it all along. So very soon I'll be entering an area associated with the University of Toronto. Here is Manning Avenue, so just to the north of here on Blue Street should be Koreatown. 
and to the south on College should be Little Italy. And then just up ahead, I'll be entering the South Annex. Jewish Folk Choir Lane. This area is known for its laneways. Markham Street looked kind of pretty. And this is Bathurst. <laughs> there should be a Krispy Kreme just here on the right. There it is. And Central Tech on the left. This is a rather neat neighborhood and probably my favorite part of all the streets I've traveled on for this rather short ride. What are you doing? There's a number of really neat restaurants and cafes in this area, which will be open to dine-in customers next week, starting the 14th. So that's good news for a lot of these local businesses. And this is Spadina Avenue. So to the right would be Chinatown, if you keep going south. And it's the University of Toronto on the left and the right, and pretty much everywhere you look. And the big, ugly Robarts Library on the left. This is Huron Street. Harbor Street does change its name to Hoskin, just up ahead here. It's not uncommon to see film crews in this area. The University of Toronto St. George Campus Athletic Grounds just on the right. Some kind of event taking place it looks like. Looks like they're building something. It's Trinity College on the left. Easily one of the 
prettiest buildings in the city. I have no idea if I pointed the camera correctly at it or not. And just up ahead is Queens Park. I haven't been this way in a while. I just, whoop, I missed the signal. Sorry, that is 100% on me. Johnny Strides runs red. I think that's the first time I've ever done something like that on one of these videos. Feel like an idiot, rightfully so. And that's why it's so important that everybody pays attention. Because if you have two people not paying attention, that's how accidents happen, obviously. So this is Wellesley Street. I'm now riding across. And it'll be twilight very soon. It's only 440, but it gets dark pretty early these days. All right, here I have a bicycle signal to follow. So this is Wellesley Street West, and just up ahead should be Bay Street. But I shall continue west. major street after this will be Young Street and maybe I'll end this ride somewhere around there. This guy's not blo blocking the bike lane at all, is he?
So this is Young. All right, I am going to cheat. Make sure there's no cyclists behind me. I do have a transit pass this month. Yeah. So I'm just going to cross over to Wellesley Station. Once there's a break in traffic, And we are going to call this a ride. Well, take the subway home, maybe. Maybe I'm just a bit white. Can't get my bike to. I'll leave the uh, camera running as I head down to the station. Normally I ride home. I've got plenty of energy. I'm just a little out of it mentally. So I think I'll do a few nice long bike rides throughout the week. Hope you guys enjoyed this ride from Jane and Bloor along Annette Street and DuPont, Lansdowne, Bloor, Ossington, Harbord, Hoskin, and Wellesley. This is the Wellesley Station northbound platform. And the next train won't be for three minutes. And one minute on the other side. All right, guys, thanks for watching. There are links to my Instagram and Patreon accounts if you wish to support the channel in the description, as well as channel memberships are available on the main page. Thanks again, and I will catch you on the next one.